his thing. You remember Noah and his family, God said, I'm going to destroy everything I made. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. You remember this? And God said, I'm going to save you, Miss Noah, your three sons and their wives, eight souls. I'm going to save you, but this is what I want you to do. He gave them instructions. He said, I want you to build an ark. I want you to pitch it with gopher wood so long, so high, so wide. When you get through, bring the animals in, tell them how to bring them in. He said that when you get on the inside, close the door. And the Bible says God shot them in. Am I right about it? And when God shut them in, he made it rain from heaven uh, for 40 days. Water was coming from heaven, and water was coming up from the earth, and water was all around the ark, and everything on the earth died except for eight souls, and they were alive, they were saved because they were where God told them to be. When he got ready to destroy the world. Am I right about it? And he was giving us a glimpse of what he was going to do. God said, never again will I destroy the earth by water, but the next time it'll be by fire. And guess where the saved will be, y'all? In the church. They'll be in the church. Watch God do his thing. You remember what God asked for Abraham. He said, Abraham, I want you to, I want you to offer your son Isaac on the altar. Y'all got my time for this. I want you to offer Isaac on the altar. And this is a unique and kind of ironic request because God said to Abraham, I'm going to bless all nations through your seed. Well, now God wants his son Isaac, who's born of Sarah, the free woman. Abraham has two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael is born from Hagar, the bond woman. Am I right about it? So the blessing couldn't come through there. The blessing had to come through Isaac. But God wants Isaac on the altar. Yeah. So Abraham took off going toward Mount Moriah. Yeah. And I'll tell you something, when I was in Israel, I was, we were down there near Calgary, and the guy told me, he said, if you'll just look right over there, that's Mount Moriah over there. And I got so happy, Brother Hubbard, I didn't know what to do. I wanted to go over there and just preach right there on Mount Moriah. But anyway, let me get back to the story. They went to Mount Moriah, they were headed up to the sacrificial place, they were getting dangerously close to where the sacrifice was to take place. Abraham turned to his attendants. He said, y'all abide ye here. Yeah. Yeah. While I and the lad go yonder to worship. Watch this church. He said, and we will be back. Are y'all following me? Y'all not following me? God wants Isaac's life on the altar. Abraham, a great man of faith, knows something about God that Isaac doesn't know. Am I right about it? And so he says, we'll be back. And so they go on up toward the sacrificial place. And Isaac gets a little nervous. He said, now wait a minute, Dad. I, 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 I see the wood here. And, and I see the fire. But, but where is the sacrifice? That's where we get the word Jehovah Jireh. Now Abraham said, I'm God. He will provide. Am I right about it? And he said, don't worry about it, son. God will provide. So he's getting ready to kill him. And God stops. Angel of the Lord speaks to Abraham and says, there's a ram in the bush. Y'all yeah, yeah, don't miss a chance to shout tonight. Now, now, there's a ram in the bush. When you and I needed a Savior, I said when we needed somebody to die in our place, God had a ram in the bush. Jesus came and died for you and for me. God was doing his thing, but God was showing us he's got us a plan in mind. That's going to come to fruition when Jesus comes. Let me, let me, let me quote a script to get my motor going tonight. Because see, y'all, y'all looking at me funny, but I, I want you to understand: through messianic prophecy, you can see, you can see that God is about to do something He has never done before. Let's 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 pick a prophet. Look, let's go to Isaiah. And I'm going to quote several of them, and y'all just read along and, and make sure I'm quoting it right. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse number 1. The Bible says, in the days of death of King Uzziah, I saw the Lord seated upon a throne, high and lifted up, his train filled all the I wish I could camp out and just talk about this text here, but his train filled all the temple, and there was seraphim above the temple. They each had six wings. With two wings, they covered their face. With two wings, they covered their feet. With two wings, they did fly. They said, holy, 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 the earth is full of the Lord's glory. Their voices shook the doorpost. There was smoke everywhere. Isaiah said, woe is me, for I am undone. My lips are unclean. I dwell among the people whose lips are unclean. Then Isaiah said, one of the seraphim went over to the altar, took a hot coal off the altar, put it 
it on my tongue said, Thy sin has been forgiven. Thy iniquity has been purged. And then Isaiah said, I heard a voice from heaven oh, say, God. Who will go for us? And who shall we send? And I just said, Lord, here am I. Send me. Watch God do this thing. Come on, go with me a little further. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 6. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, Everlasting Father. Praise so God. Peace. Watch God do his thing. Isaiah chapter 11. I know you'll like this one. Verse number 5. The Bible says, In righteousness is the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the young lion and the fattening together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear, they shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the old lion shall eat strong by the ox. Go ahead and preach, Jack. All right? The second child shall play upon the horn of the ass. The weaned child shall put his hand in the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy it all my holy mountain, for the ark shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters Cover the sea. Do you know what Isaiah was doing? Isaiah was showing us that when Jesus comes, this is the kind of peace that would come to the earth. He took animals that don't normally get along with each other, and he shows that one day they'll all be together. Come, let's go a little further. I don't know if I quoted this one for you the other night. I've been preaching so much, but this fits real good right in here. Isaiah chapter 28, verse number 14. Isaiah said, Wherefore, hear the word of God, you scorn for me, which ruleless people which is in Jerusalem, because you said, We made a covenant with death, and with hell are we out of agreement. When the overflowing skirt shall pass, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tri stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Judgment will I lay to the land and righteousness to the plumbing. The water, the, the water shall, the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies. The water shall overflow the hiding places. Yes, and your covenant with death shall be disannulled. Your agreement with hell shall not stand. God was doing his thing. Yes, God was showing us that one of these old days when he sends Jesus down to the earth, all of this would come to fruition. Yes, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. Right, but man. they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount over wings as eagles. They shall ride, not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 54, 17. No one that formed against me shall perform. I'm trying to let you know God is doing his thing. Well, let's go to my text. Let's go to my text. Let's go to my text. Isaiah chapter 43. And verse number 19. God said, Behold. Behold. Y'all know what behold means? See, in our modern day vernacular, that would be like, check this out. Keep this. Behold, I will do. A new thing. Yes, sir. A new thing. Yes, sir. A new thing. Yes, sir. And you notice what he said before 19, verse 18, he says, Now, remember ye not the former things of old. That's right. He said, Don't even consider them. He said, Now I want you to think about what I did, but behold, I'm getting ready to do something greater than that. Then some of y'all say, Well, what are those things? Well, if you remember the history I gave you last night on the board. Israel was divided into yes, two kingdoms. Yes, sir. Yeah. You had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Yes, sir. And uh, here they are in Babylonian captivity. Yes, sir. In this text, okay. Babylon has taken the southern kingdom into Babylonian captivity. 606, 597, 586. Three major invasions that took the children of Israel that were in the southern kingdom into Babylonian captivity. And so uh, God said, now, I know you're captive here in Babylon, but I, I got something that's going to be even greater than getting you out of Babylon. Yeah. That's where I'm going in a few minutes. But he said, now, you remember you were in Egypt. Yes, sir. Y'all remember this? Yes, sir. Let, give give me a couple sense. minutes. Let's go back over there. You remember this? The Israelites were in Egyptian bondage yes, for 400 years. Yes, sir. How did they get there? There was a famine in their land. 
They heard it was corn down in Egypt. They packed up everything, went down to Egypt, and ended up in bondage, in slavery. They cried out to God. They were, they, they were, they were so oppressed down there that they began to cry out to Jehovah. And uh, Exodus 3, 7 says, God says, I have heard their cry. I know their sorrow. I have seen their affliction. And I have come down to deliver them. Well, how did he deliver them? Before they even got ready to cry, God was getting the man ready. It was already in his mind. God already knew what he was going to do. Matter of fact, let me back up just another step. Have you ever wondered what that O stands for in the middle of God's name? That stands for omniscient. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omni audio, omni video. You missed your chance to shout. The God you serve, He has all power. I said He has all power. He's, um, he's omnipotent. He has all power. I don't care about who comes to power. You know, we got so bent out of shape. Well, not us, but a lot of folks got bent out of shape when they elected. Uh, Obama's president. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, you you really saw who your friends were. Yes, Come on now. Yes, sir. Same folk you've been working by for years. Y'all got along. Y'all went to the movies. Y'all ate together. Everything was grooving. After that day when they inaugurated him, yeah. mercy. I ain't trying to say nothing political. I'm just letting you know. God does not care about who's in power. Matter of fact, they can't come to power unless he allows it. The power is in God. It's in Christ and the Holy Spirit. The power is not in guns. It's not in knives. It's not in bombs. It's not in tanks. It's not in troops. It's not in any of these foreign countries. It's not in Israel. It's not in Egypt or Iraq or Iran or Russia or Ukraine. The power is in God. It's not in any of these leaders, even in the White House. God doesn't care about who's in the White House. He has all power in his hand. You can let the... Clintons and the Reagans and the Bushes and the Washingtons and the, let them all come. God doesn't care about who's in the White House. And you all not really care about who's in the White House. Just have God in your house. Yeah. 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 This is why I'm passing through. That same God that takes care of you with a job, He can take care of you without a job. Yeah. Up there with us. Yeah. Up there, man. We landed yeah. at 
the Indianapolis airport. I got off. I got out of the gate. God was at the gate. Yeah. Yeah. I found the rental car. Got in the car. God was in the car. Yeah. Found the hotel. Got in the room. God was already in the room. Y'all yeah. don't hear me. Yes, sir. I said he's omniscient. Yeah. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. Yeah. He's omni-audio. Yeah. 